How's it going, Rogues Gallery, and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today, we're going to talk about my uh, Flesh and Blood U.S. Nationals experience, right? This is going to be a recap, but I'm going to do this in a little bit of a different way. If you've seen my vlogs before, they were all their own just kind of like contained thing. The story followed me through. This is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be more of me just talking about it, and I'll kind of show some of the stuff as we talk about it and then at the end of the video we're going to show off a bunch of the cool stuff that we got from nationals because we got a lot of cool stuff right got some cool like enamel pins i got some cards signed by steve argyle there's new promos there's uh play mats just like kind of just some cool stuff to show including like a really cool map of the venue done in the flesh and blood style like the world of wraith it's just really cool so yeah we're just gonna talk about uh u.s nationals here and my experience with it because Honestly, at the end of the day, and this is one of the things that I want to lead with, the event basically reinvigorated my love for Flesh and Blood. It wasn't really waning or anything like that, but, you know, you get burnt out every now and then on things that you're really passionate about and things that you spend a lot of time on, uh, both, you know, talking about and thinking about. And I, that's true for me in Flesh and Blood, right? I basically live card games. I live eat breathe card games right and flesh and blood is one of five that i'm currently playing it's my favorite game and is my main focus but you know you still get burned out every now and then and walking away from this event kind of like reinvigorated my passion for flesh and blood in a way that i didn't i wasn't really expecting honestly um and it's a uh, it's a fascinating thing and it's one of those things where i'm just like you know, I said it on stream, but I highly recommend going to events like this, even if you're not a competitive player, because you, you know, not only interact with the community, but you have all these really, really fun side events that you can partake in. There's ultimate pit fight events. There's commoner events. Uh, there's like limited, you know, sealed draft going on. And it's just such a great time. It's like a festival, right? It's like a flesh and blood festival, Everfest even without like, you know, the carnival, you know, the carnival aspects of it. But uh, it's just such a good time. And it's just concentrated flesh and blood for the weekend, right? Walking around the venue, you just see people playing flesh and blood just everywhere. People playing CC, people playing um, uh, like uh, draft. It's just a great time. So, yeah, let, let's kind of give a little, get a little, get a little recap. I did do uh, a bit of a recording, so I'm gonna toss it to me um, over in Las Vegas for a little intro. So, talk to me in just a second. Look at this. Look at this. And the view is not too bad, not too bad. I don't know how much we're going to be doing for the vlog here, but I'm going to be doing some sort of vlog. I didn't record anything before this, but it was a really easy flight. And um, well, this is going to be my flesh and blood U.S. Nationals 2023 vlog. Let's do it. Cool. Thanks, me. Yeah. So that was uh, me and day one in las vegas we're gonna kind of just go through this pretty quickly because i'm sure you don't want the 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 all of the exact details but um i got there a little bit early uh, a day early just spent some time scoped out the venue uh said hi to some people got some dinner just hung out it was just a good time it's, it's good to when you go to events like this i think it's a good time it's good to give yourself some breathing space right so it's not just all fly in do your thing and then fly out I think it's great to give yourself some time to breathe and to experience some of the things nearby. Uh, I'll be honest, most of the time I just spent in the hotel because it's a, it was a massive hotel it was the, in the Westgate and in Las Vegas. And there was like multiple restaurants, um, cafes, stores, uh, as well as just a, a giant section that was all like these massive venues. There was like a Missa... Not really Miss America because it looked global, but there was like a beauty pageant going on. I saw some folks setting up like a boxing ring, uh, walking past one of the venues. So it was really cool. It was very big. And the Flesh and Blood venue itself was also uh, was also pretty big. I'm going to kind of like smash the days down a little bit and just kind of condense it down. I had a really great experience overall. Um, it was my first time working with Star City Games, and I think I walked away just like, Really, really positive on the, the the thing just in general. Had a great time working with uh, the, the 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 production team. So huge shout out to those guys. Um, uh, Jeremy Knoll kind of ran the things. You might know him from like a Commander versus series, but uh, just a really really nice guy and great to work with. Um, obviously, all my casters were awesome. You have uh, like Sam Ponkage, uh, Flake, and Brian Gottlieb. I'd worked with Brian Gottlieb and Flake before. Obviously, so this is my first time like actually meeting and chatting with uh with sam and ponkage they're, they're both excellent guys and 
really got to know them over the course of the weekend, especially Ponkage. We talked about like the dinner one night at Benihana. We talked about like um, a lot of non flesh and blood stuff, and just it was just great. We talked a lot about like Baldur's Gate and a bunch of other stuff too. It was, it was really good. Um, and then the event itself, like uh, I, I, the flesh and blood meta was fa fascinating. I think it's really open and really interesting right now. There's like five to seven really good viable heroes. I would argue Uzuri is in there because she did get um, top three or four in the calling. Uh, the talk of the town is the Charles Dunn defensive briar that ended up winning it. And uh, it was really fun and interesting to cast his matches over the course of the weekend. Even if Flake and I did get stuck with like the, the hour long grind fests, uh, which is funny because I always seem to get stuck with these like, you know, grindy matchups. Um, but um, yeah, it's just really good, really interesting. Um, we did see Lexi take the win at the calling uh, with Yuki Lee Bender scoring, you know, the finishing blow. I think she did an absolutely fantastic job. I wish we were able to see, you know, coverage from that but basically the way coverage worked is they had two two things set up to record and it's basically the feature match and then like a backup match so we can always have something going so we didn't really you know have stuff to do the the actual calling um and i think from pr the production side they really just wanted to focus on the main event and they didn't want to like muddy it up with the calling as well which i kind of get though i do know a lot of people out there would prefer to see the calling as well um SCG really kept the ball rolling, which was which is awesome. Like it was pretty pretty snappy on a lot of stuff. Um, following along with uh, so one of the things that we did this time that I have never done before is we followed uh, someone's draft. So we picked a pod. It was a top seated pod uh, for uh, draft, and then it was me, Flake, and Sam picked someone. I picked Levi Rouch, um, and we we observed their draft. Wrote down literally every single card that they picked. Um, and it was just like really fascinating. I've never done that before. I thought it was really, really interesting. Um, I had a lot of fun with with that just in particular. And I, I, I'm I'm a big fan of draft. I know I know uh, limited get, is getting maligned a little bit by the competitive community, but I love draft. I love limited. I think it's a blast. And uh, I had a fun like following along. Um, what else to say? I mean, like, there's not too too much else. It was just a great time. I just my overall experience was. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I'm walking away from this event, like, kind of reinvigorated. I just want more Flesh and Blood now. I just want more to play more Flesh and Blood, to experience more Flesh and Blood, to cast more Flesh and, flesh and Blood. I have a feeling if there's more events here on the West Coast that I might get the opportunity to do um, more casting and coverage, which I would definitely jump at the opportunity to do so. Um, yeah, and then there's, like, Worlds coming up. I don't think I'm going to be doing coverage at Worlds. I actually don't know. I don't know if anyone knows at this point, but um, I would expect that they're not going to ask me, but I'm still going to be going. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to that. Really, really looking forward to, um, you know, another big flesh and blood event. The venue itself, as you've seen in, you know, footage already, uh, was really cool. It was one of the nicer venues that I've been to. The Westgate was a pretty nice hotel and uh, the, the whole event just looked very, very regal. Um, so, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to everyone involved. Um all of the excellent, amazing cosplayers. I almost forgot. Uh, I, I ended up judging the cosplay contest. Uh, I kind of got roped into it like an hour or two hours before, you know, coverage was done and Flake up comes up to us, uh, me and the rest of the casters. He's like, all right, believe me or not, I, I'm telling the 100% truth. You guys are going to judge the cosplay contest. And I was like, no, you're judging the cosplay contest. And he's like, no, I, I'm hosting it. You're judging. And it, I was like, all right, let's do it. So, yep, I ended up hosting the, the cosplay contest. I actually know a little bit about cosplay. Not not a ton, but I know enough to, to know what to look out for. So, like, for example, just, you know, quick and dirty of it. I value um, homemade kit bash things over store-bought things. I value, like, crafts, craftsmanship and, um, you know, props and creativity and and character and all this all this kind of stuff we had like these guidelines to judge by i think i was the nicest judge i think i gave more people high scores than anyone else um because i'm just like i'm just like i feel the passion that the, all the cosplayers had for like flesh and blood and the world of wraith and i was just like i was like i can't I can't give him too low of a score. I don't know. Maybe I'm too nice. I'm too soft. Uh, so my, my range was on the, on the higher side of things. I'm not going to say exactly high. 
Um, but uh, yeah, all the all, all the cosplayers were absolutely fantastic, and uh, I mean, you've already seen on on screen uh, the the winner, which is a uh, Max Ferocity playing Dated All. Absolutely incredible job, absolutely incredible job. Um, and a little bit of a side, she actually might come on to our next Flesh and Blood D and D campaign. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We're going to try to coincide that with bright lights, obviously. So uh, just, you know, stick around. Stick around for that. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, definitely check out Escape from South Maw. It's hopefully going to be like a three episode thing. And then we're going to um, potentially do new adventures in Wraith. Like I said, maybe in time for bright lights, maybe with new characters, maybe with the same characters. I don't know. But anyway, I'm getting into the weeds on that. So, yeah, cosplay contest was, was super cool. Something that I did not plan on getting roped into, but I did in the last uh, in the last second. But. Yeah, overall, great, absolutely great event. Um, really, really nice to be back doing casting and coverage again. Uh, I'll be a little bit honest, I was pretty nervous going into it. I think everyone is. Um, but uh, it had been like a, maybe a year or so. Pro Tour 1 is the last time I did Flesh and Blood coverage. And uh, it was really nice to kind of like shake off the rust a little bit, get back in the saddle. And uh, yeah, just get, just uh, give it a go. I love I love Flesh and Blood. love talking about Flesh and Blood. And uh wouldn't rather be doing anything else. So, yeah, let's go to the top down. I've already rambled on for 10 minutes. Uh, let's go to the top down and uh, show off all the cool stuff that I got at uh, U.S. Nationals. All right, so here is the show and tell portion of today's video. We're going to be opening up some various things, some things that I actually don't know exactly what's inside, as well as this History Pack 1 Spanish edition given to me by uh, Francesca from Legend Story Studios. She is one of the organized play managers. Um, really, really nice person. It was my first time meeting her, and um, well, she gave me this, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna open up on the channel, so we're gonna do that today. We're also gonna open up some uh, promo packs that I got for doing casting and coverage. So they gave us a kind of a little goodie bag here, and we'll kind of share all the things that came in the goodie bag and other things that I got here and there. Uh, so yeah, let's do it. So we'll open up all four, four, I can count, of these at the end. These are um, draft packs from the uh, Team Sealed event for Outsiders, I believe. I could have taken Monarch First Edition ones, but I was like, you know, I like Outsiders more, so I'll take Outsiders. They are technically opened, but I have not looked inside, except for to cram in some Monarch cards uh, that have LSS stamps, so I can show you the difference between the two. But I actually don't know what's inside these. It could just be, you know, random rares and stuff. Could be a legendary. I don't know. Someone actually pulled a cold foil phantasmal footsteps that has the the LSS stamp when uh, I was at the, uh, like, the staff after party thing. So we're going to open up all this stuff <clears throat> at the end here. Um, let's let's do some of this this scattered things. So first of all, yo, check this out. Look how awesome this is. So this is the pin that I wore during casting and coverage for U.S. Nationals uh, on day two and day three. Uh, I bought this from Fab Metal Tokens. They gave me a shirt for free. I obviously I picked the Arachne shirt um, because I don't have they don't really have an Uzuri shirt. Uh, and then I picked this to kind of match with it, and then I just wore this through the whole weekend. So it's like the really really cool enamel pin of uh, Ara Arachne's mask, which is really, really sweet. Um, like I said, I got all of these uh, as part of like a goodie bag. So we have a cold foil prism, Awakener of Soul, and then also a Riptide, <laughs> a cold foil Riptide, which is kind of random, but I do believe this is these are things that players uh, in the events got. Like, I think this one was maybe the Calling one, and this was the U.S. Nats one. I'm not sure, but I was pretty happy to get a, a Cold Foil uh, Prism, because I haven't been able to pull a normal one <laughs> in my Dust Till Dawn pack, so that's pretty sweet. Um, and then I have these two promo packs, which I could leave sealed, but nah. I, I, I open up all this stuff. I very rarely sell stuff like this that I get from these events, though I might. Like, for example, I'm going to show off a playmat that I got that I'm probably going to sell because it's going to eventually, I think it's going to be a duplicate for me. So I do believe this is just a play, not a playset, but one of each of the Herald of Triumph. So we have Triumph Red, Triumph Yellow, and then of course Triumph Blue, all with the extended art. Beautiful, beautiful Sam Yang art, one of my favorite Heralds. Um, very pretty. And uh, really looking forward to talking to Sam later. Um, 
maybe next month. I can't remember when we scheduled it, but Sam's going to talk to us on the Living Legends podcast after uh, Bright Lights is spoiled. And then we have this uh, like extended art banner at promo pack as well. So yeah, I got both of these, the cold foil, uh, as well as some play mats as part of like a little goodie bag for um, doing casting for the weekend. So we have the banneret of courage, banneret of gallantry, beautiful, beautiful artwork, and then a banneret of protection. The foiling looks really good on these. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, so these are just going to go into my kind of just my collection, into my, my, my binder. I have, I have a binder that just has a bunch of like, you know, promos and foils and stuff. It was mostly like promos. All right, so now the next couple things I want to show you. I would like you to advert your gaze. If you are sensitive to Magic the Gathering, you may want to advert your gaze for like 10 seconds because I did get Steve Argyle to sign my Leviathan Redeemed. However... I also got him to sign some magic cards, so we're gonna show some. We're gonna show some magic cards here. So we have a uh, a foil Brightling. Uh, we have a foil Liliana of the Veil vale that I was happily uh, happy to have uh, Steve Argyle ruin with his signature. Uh, I have a Damia Sage of Stone. What I mean by that is, it's considered like damage now, but I don't care. I'm not gonna sell it. Um, and then a foil Monastery Swift Spear, and then a non foil. Deathrite Shaman. These are all the cards that I was gonna get uh, Mark Poole to sign, but apparently, and unfortunately, Mark Poole uh, was not able to make it to the event, but I wanted to sign my my balance that I've had since I was like eight years old, as well as some kind of like stuff scattered here and there. But in any case, yeah, I've already gotten all these people to sign my flesh and blood stuff, so I was like, you know what? What else do I have for them to sign? And I kind of just scoured through some of my random decks. I, this was an Oathbreaker deck. Almost all these are in um, commander decks to some degree, so I was just like, yep, let's let's kind of knock that out. And I also also got a also got a Liliana. <laughs> I got one of the metal ones here that that's signed by uh, Steve, so I'm gonna get a custom frame for this. It's gonna go up somewhere in the studio. It's it's pretty small, so it can kind of fit here or there. I don't really have a lot of magic stuff in the studio, but I mean, you know, very. Very pretty. All right, more flesh and blood stuff. Let's get back to some flesh and blood stuff. So this is the map of the U.S. Nationals, which is super, super cool. Uh, I'm glad I kept this. I kind of want to maybe get like, I don't know, maybe like a cheap frame or something. Here's the event schedule on the back. But this was just given to everyone. You know, they, they were plentiful. I just think it's super cool. Um, the casting coverage area was over here, even though it's not labeled. But everything is labeled here. It's very cool. I like this a lot, like a lot, a lot. And then we have the play mats, right? Um, I always walk away with way too many, <laughs> way too many play mats. I have a problem. So um, this one is actually so I, I got I got um, this one from Steve Argyle. Uh, obviously got the really cool signature on it. This one is actually uh, art that he did for a Brandon Sanderson novel, one of the Mistborn um, books. But um, I think the books are really cool. I haven't read all of them yet, but uh, I like the character. She's really, really sweet looking. Look, she looks like an awesome assassin, right? She looks so cool. So, yep, this is just a great one. I think I could use this for a lot of different videos. And then here we have some that uh, were given to me by LSS, um, or rather they're given to me um, for, it's part of that, that, that uh, little like goodie bag. So here we have this kind of just Le Legislator Studios one. That, you know, you can kind of see a dragon here. Uh, you can kind of see a person over here. I like this one. It's very, like, um, abstract. There's, like, a bunny. Like a bunny right here. It's very abstract, but I, but I really like it a lot. And then we also got the Levi Redeemed mat. Now, this is not the one that Steve Argyle has for sale. This is the one with zones that was given to participants of, I think, it, just the Nationals, but it might have been Calling as well. So... Yeah, this is one that I'm probably going to sell and then keep the the full art one that I already pre-ordered from Steve Argyle. So, yep. That's that's that with the mats. We're going to put this uh, put this one back on because it just looks incredible. Um, and then let's open these. Let's open some packs. So we're going to zoom in a bit. Zoom in a bit. Make sure it still looks good. Yeah. All right. So um, let's do this one last. Francesca did say it was from a fresh box, so I don't know, could get something cool in there. Could, oh, dude, a 
a Spanish black border tunic would be sick. All right, so I think this is the one. This this is the one I crammed some other cards into. So, yeah. So this one has uh, the Monarch stamped card. So the ones that have this LSS stamp are ones that were used in the um, the Nationals draft. And so I just I just grabbed some Illusionist ones that I think are cool and I, I could maybe use for UPF or something in the future. So we have Herald of Rebirth. Spears of Surreality, Art by Crovius, art artists that I've worked with many times, Seeds of Agony, Herald of Tenacity, War Tune Herald, Herald of Triumph, another War Tune Herald. Okay, so those, th these are just like chaff that were just sitting around and I was like, hey, does anyone want these? And I just kind of picked, I went through and picked the ones that I, you know, I consider playable um, or just cool ones. Uh, and then we have these, which I have not seen at all. This is, you know, a surprise for me as it is for you. So let's see, we have a Feisty Locals. These ones also have a stamp, but uh, it's more of like an actual stamp and not an LSS stamp. I'm not sure what that is supposed to be, but these are the ones that were used in the team uh, sealed draft. Yeah, you can, yeah, can kind of see the stamp a little bit better here. Ravenous Rabble, um, obviously the first edition because that's the only edition that exists for Outsiders, but who knows, maybe we get some, oh, <laughs> this one's sweet, uh, Spreading Plague. Yo, I got a Majestic. I wasn't expecting anything at all, so I'll take the Majestic. We got an Infectious Host. Ooh, Foil. Foil Death Touch. I don't see a... St no, yeah, yeah you, there, the stamp's right there. You can hardly see it. Uh, and then a Blade Cuff. All right, I got, we got two two nice ones. I might actually use this. I have a... My Uzuri deck uses... Oh, wait, did I cut the yellows? I'm not sure if I kept, I kept the yellows in it. All right, well, let's see. We got a... Free Willing Renegades. We'll kind of go through this pretty quickly because there's not a ton of exciting stuff. I mean, Widowmaker is, is nice. Death Touch. Humble. We have a uh, Spike with Blood Rot. Red, which is pretty good. Ooh, Razor's Edge, which is also pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. The, st the stamp's pretty cool. The stamp's pretty cool. Um, I guess I'll put this down here. It is a playable one. I do like the, the Spike. Spike with... Blood rot. All right. Oh, I could tell the the card stock was this one, and this one in particular was used from a different box. These are the card stock from these ones. These are uh, Belgian print. I could tell this is uh, Japanese print because the it's just much rougher. Maybe you can even see here along the edge. Just it's just much rougher. Anyway, let's see if we got anything sweet in this one. My luck for this particular, like the Japanese ones, is not great. Well, it's fine. I, I did a video recently opening this, so I talk about it in that video. Another spike with blood rot, sure. And then a prowl. Hey, this would have been these would have been sweet packs. Can end up with a really sweet assassin deck, like double spike, double spike with blood rot. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, and I got double spike with the stamp on it. Um, at least we got one majestic spreading plague. That's pretty good for outsiders. Let's be honest. Um, and I'm just gonna stack these up and uh, probably set them aside somewhere. Anyway, last. But certainly not least, the first and only pack of uh, Spanish History Pack 1 that I have ever opened. Uh, let's, let's do it. Once again, uh, given to me by uh, Francesca from Legend Story Studios. Unlike uh, History Pack English, these are Black Border. Uh, so we have a like, Sleep Dart. We have a uh, Agitator Voraz, Ravenous Rabble. Voltic Bolt. Headshot, uh, Zipper Hit, Llama, oh dude, the name is so great, Llama del Eter, Lectura de Runas. Ooh, we got a little, nice little helm there. All right, Steel Blade Shunt as a rare, Legendary. Oh, we got, a, we got a Majestic, oh, let's go. Three block Majestic. Oh, oh, I think this is, okay, so this is either Red in the Ledger or knock the death whistle. Either way, perfect. Yo, <laughs> let's go, dude. Knock el sonido de la muerte. Oh, that's sweet. If you don't know why this is so sweet, is this is the first spoiler card that I ever did for Flesh and Blood for Arcane Rising. It's the first time they had spoilers at all, and I was given a uh, knock the death whistle. Super, super cool. All right, dude. I'll take it. That's very fitting. Very fitting. Azalea specialization there. Well, that's going to be that for today's video. Thank you so much for watching um, and kind of just listening to my talking head recap plus this little bonus bit at the end. I had a blast at uh, US Nationals 
And um, yeah, I can't wait to play a lot more Flesh and Blood. As always, expect more Flesh and Blood content here on the channel. I'm doing kind of a new thing over on my Patreon. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna call it. It could be like Red Zone Raw or something where I just give my unfiltered, unedited opinions. Uh, so if you wanna that kind of content, go check out the Patreon. Um, it's gonna be a once a month Patreon exclusive. But in any case, Flesh and Blood, a hell of a game. And um, yeah, I just can't wait to play more. We have some really, really, really exciting stuff coming up in the next week that I can't talk about yet. So stay tuned for all of that. And um, we'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you.